The last couple of seasons, we try to offer a lot of strategy during the season. When we're coming out and sitting in our stands, we're getting there early. Dylan and I have been putting together some uh, you know, tips and tactics as it relates to the hunting season, in hunting season, bringing you hunting season footage. And I love that time of year. And the cool thing about this shoot right now, and we're bombing out around today, getting uh, trail cam cards and changing, and we're getting a lot of video shot, is that this is the last shoot before we enter that hunting season time where we're only doing our shoots when we're accessing our stands, in our stands, in our blinds throughout the entire three and a half months of the season. So I can't wait for that to happen. But right now, we're just about in the early season. Like I said, this is the last time we're out on the property, moving around, shooting videos like this. And, um, and I can't wait to move into the hunting season, but that dictates that this is the actual early season. I mean, this is the early season already in some states and it's time to get in your stands. And one of the things that going into the early season is something, things that can last all season long. To me, there's about five things that you can do to not only get ready for the early season, but to get ready for the entire hunting season. Now for scouting, obviously people have trail cameras, you've been scouting, maybe driving around in the farm fields around you. One of the most important things during the season is to have your cameras covering your corners. It doesn't matter if it's a 40 or 200 acre parcel. On a 40 acre parcel, I typically have five to six cameras. On a 100 acre parcel, they might be six or eight. 200 acre parcel, that might even get into eight to 10. But I've, I've heard about cameras, over 100 cameras on one 200 acre parcel. It's a little excessive, but um, they, you can bet they had their corners covered. But covering your corners tells you what bucks are coming in when. If they're coming in the middle of the night, that tells you they're coming from a mile away. You can tell what side you're, they're coming from because you're getting pictures of that buck on these two cameras, but not these other four or five cameras. So you know they're coming in from this corner. Um, on the other hand, if they're coming in and you're getting pictures of them in and around daylight, the time to hunt them is right now. Covering your corners can tell you a lot. And let's say you have a trail camera in your favorite spot in the middle of your property for collecting footage and that buck comes in, you don't necessarily know where he's coming from. Was he hitting your food plot on the outside first and then came in? The timing of when he's on and off your property um, is not fully addressed. And so that's why I really encourage you to cover your corners. Now heading into the season and make sure that you can get into your stands, I really like a stick-free access. Now no, I'm not going to go and blow the leaves off my trails into my stands, but if you're one of my neighbors, I really encourage you to do that. Leaf drop around here is the end of October, be a great time to make nice walking paths to your stands. No, all kidding aside, there are people that do that. They blow the leaves off the property, leaves drop in the Midwest, end of October, terrible time to be in the woods blowing the leaves off your property. If you walk quietly, if you walk heel, heel the toe, you can make it in and out of your stand really quietly, but sharp sticks, metallic, and it brings up really what's more important, sound control or scent control. Obviously, your stand locations, which we'll talk about in a second, takes care of your scent control. But for your access into your stands, the noise you make going up and down your stands, really how much do you project when you're hunting? You know, think about it, if the deer had a gun, how much quieter would you make your stand locations and access? Um, walking in, heel the toe on some leaves, leaf, no leaf noise is natural in the woods, but whether it's buckles, straps, Velcro, your stands, banging into your stands, doors on your blinds, whatever it might be, I think there's sometimes we can spook deer two, three hundred yards away just by making a sound before we even ever hunt, before we even ever sit down in our stand to actually hunt. So that stick-free access and maintaining quiet stand locations, quiet access, quiet clothing, quiet boots, it's all in the same picture, they have to be quiet. So you're covering your corners with your trail cameras, you're making sure your access to your stands is totally quiet in your stands, your equipment's quiet, and that brings up stand location. Your stand location is the number one form of scent control. When we hunt this stand right down here, we have southwesterly winds that lie in the valley towards the house below. When we hunt this stand up here in the evening, we have to have northeast winds to east winds or we can't sit. And they have to be firm because it's going uphill. We can't allow them to turn into two, three miles an hour and just saturate this area right here. But when we hunt our stands with the right wind, we really take out 90% of the time that a deer is gonna spook you because they're simply downwind. Number one form of scent control, make sure your stands are in the right location. Don't rely on some type of scent gel, spray, powder, contraption to control your scent because the, I'm telling you, if a four or five, six year old buck is downwind of you and he's right in your scent cone, unless he's got a hot dough in front of him, he doesn't care about anything in the world, he's probably gonna turn his head and run. So stand location for scent control. We're talking covering your corners, quiet, scent control. And that brings up when you're 
traveling in and out of your stand. That's when I really love, I, I dress outside the truck with my Rubbermaid, I spray down with a scent eliminator spray because I want to control my scent on the way in and out of your stand. You know, again, once I get to my stand, I'm good. But what about that scent trail that you leave in and out of your stand? How many deer, how many mature bucks are coming by your stand four hours later? And we think, boy, that buck's not been on trail camera. We've had him for two or three weeks. I hunted the stand. I didn't blow anything out. I didn't hear any deer downwind to me. I didn't spook any deer. But then all of a sudden that deer doesn't come back. Well, what about that 700 yard scent trail, long scent trail that you left in the woods, whether it was brush or weeds or debris coming in and out of that stand location? and you know what is the impact of that on your hunting and finally that brings us to really analyzing your weather patterns i talked about in uh, late august early september a video where really looking at your forecast and understanding when there is a major temperature drop that's first most important when you have major wind speed drops could be that it's dropping from 50 to 25 or 30 to 15 it doesn't really matter it's a major change when you have extreme weather patterns that come through and it pressures deer and holds deer. Do you want to feed five times in a 24 hour period? So if they're missing feedings because of a lot of noise in the woods and a lot of stress and the temperature's dropping, that stress, the temperature dropping and the lack of quality feedings when they're wanting to feed five times in a day and they're pinned down in their bedding areas with extreme weather, they're missing a lot of food and feeding opportunities and they can't wait to put the feed back on as soon as that weather breaks. So really great time during the summer, great time in the early season start analyzing those patterns relate those patterns to your trail cameras. Sometimes that takes a little while, and that's why this is a great time to scout your trail cameras, scout when those deer are moving, relate it to those wedding weather patterns. I talk about those weather patterns last year. If you look up uh, rut hunting formula, uh, you'll find all the details it takes to analyze that weather. But really important that you start establishing those patterns because that is the number one predictor of deer movement. You can use the weather to forecast your movements. And, uh, and the deer movements and when you should be in the woods too. So think about that, covering your corners, think about getting your stand locations quiet, making sure your stand locations are in an area where the deer are downwind, they're not getting a hold of you. And then also looking and analyzing those weather patterns, making sure you have scent free access, that all your equipment's quiet. And, you know, of course, outside of shooting and making sure you can hit your target, which is ultimately the most important, these are the hunting uh, steps that I feel that you can take in the early season to not only give you success in the early season, but especially into the October lull, into the rut, and into that late season. And you know, who knows, when you eliminate scent, when you eliminate sound out of the picture, when your stand locations are located appropriately, when you hunt with the weather, you hunt when the deer are moving, guess what? A lot of you won't experience that October lull because you're just not spooking deer. Try these five steps, and I think they'll not only help you in the early season, but all season long.